Okay, welcome to part two of the 195 video. This section will cover using virtual media servers. We will talk about patching virtual media servers, creating pixel maps, and then applying imagery to those maps. There are a few things to know when you're getting started with this feature. One is that any desk that ships prior to 195 being installed on the factory floor will require you to install a pixelmap.exe. That file will be on the download section of both the EOS and ION product pages. You'll need to install this before you install 195. This contains the engine that runs the pixel mapping feature. It also contains some stock imagery that we are dropping into library zero for the pixel maps. So that's the first thing to be aware of. In the demo that follows, we will show you just a few brief tools for how images are applied and can be manipulated. There are additional features that are not covered in this particular demonstration that largely include using effects and cross-fading back and forth between channels that are used in a pixel map that also may be used as standard channels. Um, all of this will be covered in the documentation for the feature. But here's just a quick demo on how to use this new function. Now let's take a look at patching a virtual media server and creating a pixel map for it to work with. We're going to start by hitting the Displays button and coming into Patch. And we're going to select Channel 1. And Channel 1 is going to become our primary or main layer for our virtual media server. So we come over here to ETC. And then all the way to the right are our two new options for layers and server. Channel 1 becomes our server. And then we're going to add two layers for that server to work with. So channels 2 and 3, and we're going to assign layer. And then under on our patch screen under type, you can see those. And that's really it for the patch screen. We don't need to assign any traditional uh, addresses. So we come back to live for a moment. Tap our displays button again, which resets our soft keys. And you'll notice under more soft keys, we now have a new option called pixel maps. So we're going to create a pixel map. And you can create uh, more than one for our purposes. We're just going to create one to start. So we're going to create number one. And when we sell, tell it to do one, it has some default settings. So we have a grid. At the moment, it is 32 wide and 32 high. Uh, but the first thing we're going to do is assign the, the server channel. So under soft keys, we have a new set of options. So we're going to have our server channel, which is one. Uh, works with our media server. And then under layer channels, we're going to select channels two and three. So those just want to match what we had done in our patch. Now we're going to adjust width and height. I'm just going to make a slightly smaller grid for us to work with. So we're going to make that a width of 15. And under the soft key for height of 15. And over here under our pixel map, we now have the ability to zoom this in and out doing a holding down uh, right click on the mouse. You can zoom in and out and move it around. Or you can also use uh, format and the wheel, much like you do with the uh, channel display. Next thing we need to do is we actually need to tell these little squares what they are, uh, what type of fixture we're working with. So we come back up here to our soft keys again, and we go Edit. And we're going to select under Manufacturer Generic. And for our purposes, we're going to use a generic. Ah, I missed a step. We actually need to select these first. So we're going to do a right click and drag and select the field. And now we're going to go generic and RGB. So we've now told it what they are. Uh, we now need to give them an address. And we do that here on the right side of the CIA, selecting start address. We're going to set them at address one and enter. The order in which they're assigned is determined by our little example grid here. So under horizontal order, we're currently going left to right and then from top to bottom. If we want to do that in a different fashion, we can simply select right to left, and we hit Apply. You'll see over here on our grid, the numbers reorder. We're going to flip that back the way we had it. So we're now going from left to right, and then zigzagging down the line. Once we have all of that set, we come back up to the soft key for Done. And now that these the boxes are all solid gold, we are patched and ready to go.
So come back to live and we'll take a look at how to work with that. Now let's take a look at working with the virtual media server and pixel maps. First thing we're going to want to do is for our video is open the moving light control. Uh, this is one option in terms of how you'll work with the media server. Uh, you can also work with the encoders. It just shows a little better on the tape working this way. So we come down to virtual control and ML controls. In this case, I'm going to open it above the CIA. You can open it in a tab or on the other screen as well. Once we've opened that, the other, next thing we're going to want to do is open the pixel map previewer and just give it a quick double click and we'll have something to look at. So first thing we do uh, in terms of now that we've got everything open and where we want to be is we turn on channel one, which is our main output. And we then select channel two, which is our first layer. And we turn that on. You'll notice now they have channel two selected. Uh, the ML controls populate. Um, they also populated with the first one, but this is the one we're going to work with. And we have uh, some content showing on the preview. We're going to scroll here to the right and come to our library and file. Library is just like a folder. Uh, there are up to 255 of them. The one that uh, will be populated when you first load the software is zero. Uh, the rest of these are for uh, content that you'll add. Library zero has files that we've supplied so that you'll have something to get started with. Just show you a couple of quick examples of some of the content you can work with. I am not a designer. This is not art we're creating, so this is just uh, just for demonstration purposes. Uh, once we've picked our file, we come over to the right a little farther, and we now have the ability to make some adjustments to what the image looks like. In this particular screen, the way these encoders work is these are not push and drag encoders, even though they kind of look like wheels. The center point is neutral. If you move the mouse just a little bit off and push and hold, it's fine control. If you move it farther away from center, it's course control. So depending on how big a, an adjustment you want to make. So zero might be a little too small. We'll come up to around 30% or so. And then you also have your min and max options. So once we've adjusted our size, we can adjust the, the aspect ratio. Or we can adjust rotate X and rotate Y, which is kind of taking a piece of paper and either tipping it on its edge or from right to left. We can also then take it and, much like a gobo, add in a rotation to it. So we click rotate, and after clicking Z rotate, you can then adjust the speed of the rotation and the direction. So this might be a little fast. We'll just put a, a nice slow rotation on it. Come all the way back to the left. We can now, within the grid of our preview, we can then move the image around. In our pan tilt grid, we can click and drag, or we can use the pan and tilt encoders. So I want the image on the screen, but down in that bottom quadrant. Then I'll add a color I'm using the color picker. Back to the right again. The two lines, uh, while interesting, uh, aren't doing a whole lot right now. We have the ability to uh, also make them uh, move. We have a, this is a small video. So when we click uh, under playback mode one, play forward, you'll see the lines kind of start moving. Under play loop in reverse, you can make them go in the other direction. In this case, we'll play them forward. And then under playback speed, we have the ability to speed them up or slow them down. So we'll get them to somewhere that we like. And once this is all set, just like working with a moving light, uh, we've just set up uh, set all of these parameters. We now have the ability to record this into a queue. So I'm going to do a record Q1. And then we're going to take the intensity out. And we're going to start with the next layer, which is layer three. Same basic process. Come over to the right, pick a file, and I like that one. Come over and adjust its size a little bit. Maybe rotate it a little that way. Maybe put a little rotation on it. 
Maybe that's a little too fast. So we like all of this. We'll come back over to the other side. Change the color on it. We'll move it up over here. And this one is also a video. It has some movement associated with it. Most of the images do have some movement component to them. So once you have that running, we can record this as our next cue. And then we can fade between the two, uh, the two images we've just opened. So we go back to Q0 and hit go. And just like working with the moving light that hasn't been marked, we see it fade in. And then we fade in the next one and all the parameters move at the same time. Now channel two is still there, it's just the intensity's down, so I can select channel two, put it back at full, and I can record my next cue. So this is a multi-parameter de device like all of the others, and it uh, subscribes to all the same rules. So parameter timing, uh, marking, and your go to cue zero versus go to cue out all impact uh, how these will play back. And that's a quick look at virtual media server and pixel maps. So that's a quick look at virtual media server control and using pixel maps. Um, please feel free to contact us if you have any questions with this particular feature, not unlike effects. It's probably something that you'll want to sit and play with for a while on your own until you can sort of get your head around all the various modes that you can use for controlling these. But um, again, with any questions, find us on the forums or give us a call and we can help out. Thanks very much.